The YF-23 is no longer a ghost. After decades of silence, it's back in the conversation. Not as a relic, but as a serious contender in the future of air dominance. Once dismissed as the quiet loser of a high-stakes race, the Black Widow now haunts briefing rooms and strategy slides. It wasn't built for the past. It was built for now. We didn't know it then. In the early 1990s, two futuristic stealth fighters competed for the crown of American air superiority, the YF-22 and the YF-23. The YF-22 won. The YF-23 vanished. Built by Northrop Grumman, the YF-23 was sleeker, stealthier, and faster, but not as agile. At the time, close-in dogfighting was the priority. The Air Force wanted a knife fighter, not a sniper. And so, despite its advanced design, the YF-23 was shelved. It remained a forgotten prototype for years, a shadow in aviation history. It lacked the thrust vectoring agility of the F-22, and that made all the difference in a world still obsessed with visual dogfights. Its advantages in range and stealth were overlooked. No one imagined a future where long-range engagements and beyond visual range warfare would dominate. But history has a sense of irony. As air combat evolved into a war of sensors, data, and distance, the YF-23's original weaknesses became modern strengths. It was misunderstood, not underpowered. Today, its profile is being re-examined by defense analysts, engineers, and strategists alike. Because what was once rejected may now be precisely what the Air Force needs. The YF-23 was dismissed for lacking flair, but what it had was far more valuable. Its stealth profile was unmatched. With a sleek diamond-shaped frame and serpentine engine inlets, it presented a radar cross-section smaller than anything flying at the time. It didn't roar into combat with thrust vectoring tricks. It slipped through undetected, silent, deadly, strategic. While the F-22 focused on agility, the YF-23 prioritized survivability. Its combat radius far exceeded that of its rival. It could fly farther, stay hidden longer, and cruise faster without afterburners. It was built for reach, not theatric. In a world shifting toward long-range precision warfare, that reach is no longer optional. It's essential. The jet's overall design, from its smooth blended body to its radar deflecting tail, emphasized low observability and speed over raw maneuverability. Back then, that felt like a compromise. Today, it looks like foresight. In 1991, the Air Force bet on knife fights, but modern battlefields reward the sniper. Its minimal heat signature, extended range, and stealth-first architecture were ahead of their time. And now, that time has arrived. We chose the wrong attributes for the wars we thought we'd fight. The YF-23's value wasn't in how it danced in the sky, but in how it vanished before the enemy ever knew it was there. Air combat in 2025 doesn't resemble the dogfights of the past. In the vast Indo-Pacific, where distances stretch thousands of miles and runways are rare, stealth and range aren't luxury, they're requirements. Enemy forces now deploy anti-access, and area denial systems designed to keep U.S. fighters out. The battlefield isn't a close-quarters knife fight anymore. It's a precision sniper's game played over hundreds of miles. In this environment, agility isn't enough. Survivability and reach decide who dominates the skies. That's why the YF-23 is drawing attention again. Its long-range capability, low radar profile, and high-speed cruising make it an ideal platform for modern conflict. OT the one it was built for, but the one we face now. Engagements today begin before pilots even see each other. Advanced sensors, beyond visual range missiles, and networked battle spaces have made visual combat nearly irrelevant. As General Charles Q. Brown once put it, agility is important, but survivability and reach are decisive. The F-22, for all its excellence, struggles in this new reality. It relies heavily on mid-air refueling, 
and operates with limited range. In the Pacific, that vulnerability becomes a target. Meanwhile, the YF-23's strategic profile, once considered too unconventional, fits this moment perfectly. The wars of today don't need gymnasts, they need ghosts. And that's precisely what the YF-23 was designed to be. Imagine the YF-23, not as a relic, but as a reborn weapon, upgraded with sixth generation technology, ready for today's most dangerous mission. Its original airframe, already optimized for stealth and range, would become the foundation for something entirely new. With modern materials, the aircraft's radar signature could shrink even further. Plasma-based stealth and active skin technology could render enemy sensors blind. Internally, an AI co-pilot would manage threat detection and decision-making, freeing the human pilot to think strategically or fly unmanned altogether. This modernized YF-23 wouldn't just fly, it would command. Acting as a central node in a swarm of drones, it could coordinate unmanned wingmen, gather intelligence, and strike multiple targets simultaneously. Armed with hypersonic missiles, lasers, and advanced electronic warfare systems, it would become a ghost with teeth. Digital twin technology would allow engineers to build and test it virtually, cutting development time and cost while increasing reliability. Variable cycle engines would let it supercruise farther and faster than anything fielded today, maybe even reach hypersonic speeds. It would no longer be just a fighter. It would be a flying command center, a stealth platform, a drone leader, a long-range sniper, and most importantly, a response to the threats no fifth-generation fighter was ever designed to face. What the YF-23 needs is not a new body, just a new brain. And in doing so, it could become the centerpiece of the next era in air dominance. The next generation air dominance program is the Air Force's leap into the future. An optionally manned, stealth-first, AI-integrated fighter designed for deep penetration and full-spectrum warfare. But the modernized YF-23 may offer something NGAD can't, speed to deployment. While NGAD is still in development, the YF-23 already exists, and its airframe is decades ahead of its time. Retrofitted with modern engines, digital architecture, and smart sensors, it could bridge the gap between fifth-gen fighters and future platforms. NGAD may outperform it in networking and multiband stealth, but the YF-23 would still cruise farther, strike deeper, and fly faster than the F-22, and do it today. This isn't about choosing one over the other. It's about realizing that a modernized YF-23 doesn't compete with NGAD. It complements it. Together, they could form a lethal edge in contested skies. The YF-23 was never just a prototype. It was a warning and a promise, left behind but not forgotten. Now, as threats rise and time runs short, its return isn't nostalgia. It's a necessity. The jet built too early might finally arrive just in time. If you believe forgotten machines can shape the future, hit that subscribe button. We dive into the aircraft, weapons, and strategies, redefining air dominance. More stories like this one are coming, and you won't want to miss what's flying next. Subscribe now and stay airborne.